The foundation of data visualization in general is just a few types of visualizations, which are bar charts, column charts, pies, lines, and areas. That's it. You can solve 80 to 90% of real world problems with just these. In this video, we're going to get started with bars and columns. Now that we have loaded our data set, we are ready to create our very first visualization. Now I remember when I did this back in 2017 and I built my very first bar chart, it was like the weirdest moment and I suppose looking forward now to everything that's happened for me for Tableau it's just like well it was the very start of everything right so it's pretty cool um, let me show you the little bits and pieces that make up this uh, part of the dashboard first of all if you ever want to go back to the data source that you did all the connections there's two ways you can either click on this data source button right here um, which I don't like to do because eventually once you have multiple data connections uh, this only goes back to the one you're in. So the what the one I like to use is to go up here. That way, um, if you're editing a data source and you have multiple, you know exactly which one you're modifying. So let me show you how to do that. So you go right click, edit data source, and that takes you back to that initial setup. And then when you want to go back again, you just press sheet one. There we go. Okay, so this first section here, oops, and I moved the entire page. This first section here is really a reflection of all the field of uh, all the fields in your Excel data. And if you ever wanted to look at that, you can press this button right here, which is all these kind of dashed lines. And this lets you view your data set in table form, which probably a lot of you will be far more comfortable in. So you can see that each of these fields represent each of these fields, except for this one measure names, uh, the count, longitude, latitude, and measure values, which we'll get to later. Those are automatically calculated for your data set every single time. Okay, so then we have the way to view our data. We have the fields. Each of these represents all the data in those fields. Looking on to the next section, we have these, I think they call them cards. And basically what they do is the first one lets you do animations, which we'll get to later. The second one does filtering, right? So if you've ever used Excel filters, uh, let me bring it up. Maybe I can show you just so you know. So let's say I have, you know, a bunch of numbers there and I want to filter. It's the equivalent of doing this. All right. So then after that, you have your marks card. And this is probably one you're going to be using a lot. That lets us change the colors, lets us change the um, visualization type, add labels, change tooltips, do sizing, and it's dynamic. So it depends on whatever visualization you've built, whether it's a bar chart, pie chart, maps, um, hierarchy, whatever it might be, this will adapt to what you're building. The next one is the columns and rows. So moving up to the top. This one, again, you're going to be using a hell of a lot. And this is kind of the main way to build your visualizations. So if you drop things into columns, it will do a certain thing. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say what because we're going to do that right now. And then rows is going to do a certain thing. And then in here is where your actual visualization will be built. Okay, so let's go ahead and build something. Um, if I'm going to build a bar chart, I need two things, right? I need a dimension and a measure. So what is a dimension and a measure is the first question. Basically, Anything in the blue, you can think of as a dimension. Anything in the green, you can think of as a measure. So the way I like to think about this is anything that we can do math on, things like, you know, numbers, or primarily numbers, those are measures. Everything else is a dimension, generally speaking, right? Later on, once you, got, once you get much more advanced, you can kind of mix and match these to get really, really crazy behaviors, but leave that for the advanced. Um, so the measures is what we're counting. So if we're going to do a bar chart, so just think of any bar chart, right? This is the measure. The actual value is the measure. So let's start with that. If I want to see sales, I'm just going to double click sales. And what you'll notice, it goes straight into visualization for I actually have a bar chart straight away. If you think of this as in, uh, in Excel, you kind of have a staging, um, you have a staging part in the middle, right? Which I've mentioned before, which is you've got your raw data, you do all your calculations, and then you go, okay, now I'm ready to visualize it. Tableau is different. It goes straight into visualization. So by default, Tableau goes, oh, okay, you're, brought in, you're bringing in a measure. The standard way to represent that is a bar chart, right? So it's intuitive in that it can guess based on 
what you filled in here, what kind of visualization you want to build. So here you got a bar chart. I can add the labels in here simply by clicking this button up here, the letter T, and that'll give me that value. So we're sitting at about $2.3 million in sales. Great. So let's put this into a kind of real life situation. So my manager goes, Jed, I want to know how many sales we've had. Cool. It's $2.3 million, sir or ma'am. But then they go, well, I need to have that split up by the category. So I need it like spread out. So what we do is we simply double click category and it's split it out, right? And there you have it. So you got your column charts split up and then I go, and then they go, that's fantastic. I also wanna split that down further by subcategory. So what I can do is I can just double click and that will split it out even further. So the summation of this whole thing is still 2.3 million. So if I highlight everything like so, and I just leave the mouse to hover, you can see that the sum of sales, if I can get my drawing tool, is still 2.3 million. Basically what Tableau is doing is it's splitting up this measure however many times you want. So basically in this most standard of views, you cannot have more than what you started with. Right? That just simply mathematically does not make sense. Um, that kind of leads me to the other tool, which is if you ever wanted to go, well, what's the total of these four? You can always just do a box, oops, hang on, a box to just go highlight and see how much it is. If you're a fidgety person where you go like this and then you move, that little hover thing will disappear. So what you do is you just move the mouse over, leave it, and then it will come up with some extra information. All right, so that is your dimensions and your measures and kind of building your first one. Let's say I go, oh, I don't really, the manager's like, actually, I don't need subcategory anymore. So how do you kind of go backwards? Well, you can just grab this one, this subcategory, drag it, and I tend to drag it here on the gray space and see how it's um, changed symbols. So it's got like this kind of square with an X. That just gets rid of it and you kind of go backwards. Like so. Now, the other thing I want to tell you is the standard way to calculate is just to sum them up. Now, anytime you use the, you know, sum, maximum, minimum, count, median, average, those are what we call aggregates. And aggregates means basically to collect, to aggregate, to collect values. The standard one is sum. So if you look up here, you'll see sum. But if I say, I go, I wanted to see the average for all the values, I can simply right click here on the green, measure and I can switch between any of them. We're going to cover this in way more detail because there are some intricacies in it. But even as a beginner, you can go, well, I just want to see the average. It will let you do that. Okay. And it just averages the entire thing. So if I was to calculate it in Excel, the equivalent, if I go to sales, if I take this entire column and I just take an average of the whole thing, that is what that value is. Okay, and then you do it obviously for each one. So I do the average for per category. So that's how you do your aggregates in a nutshell. Typically what I see people do is sum, average, or count. So count being how many individual line items are there. So we got 2,121 office furniture row items. Okay, so let's say I go, I want to switch this instead of a column chart, I want it to be a bar chart. So going sideways. Well, one of the cool things with Tableau is these pills um, that you can see, I think they call them pills, you can move them around and mix them and then Tableau will adapt its visualization to match this. And typically, uh, you will never get an error. That's one of the cool things about Tableau. If I move this up, and I'll do it slowly, you can see that little orange triangle. So now what it's done is it's got columns going this way and then showing the sales because it's a column, it's going that way. Okay. So if I move this category down to rows, it's now made the category rows this way instead of going that way for columns. And straight away, I have a, row, uh, a, a bar chart going sideways. I can bring in that category again like so. Oh, sorry, not, not category, wrong one. Subcategory in here, and it will split it up again. But maybe I want the category at the top, sort of like a cross tab. Well, I can just move that up and I can split it again. And then maybe someone goes, well, Jed, <clears throat> we don't really need category. What we need more is like segment. Okay, let's take this out. Let's bring in segment. 
It's really that easy. At the beginning, like if you have, you know, a relatively small data set, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. You just drop that in and let's say I go, I don't want subcategory now. I want shipping status. And you can mix and match and put different things in and go, well, I don't want set count of sales. Let's switch this. Let's go to sum. So what I encourage you to do is just play with just that, those basic items. That's it. What you typically see in Excel is that. So when I work with a, a lot of clients <clears throat> and, you know, with uh, my company and all that, a lot of the Excel stuff they do is probably at this level. I would say 80% you know, 80 to 90%. And then the rest of it is like a lot more advanced or specialized, but really in a nutshell, it's just a few bar charts. The thing is it takes way longer to build it in Excel. You can see here, I can mix and match and change things so fluidly and drag and drop. I haven't even used my left hand. You know, this is all I've used my left hand for so far, just a drink of coffee. You know, it's really that simple. So what else are we going to do? That is basically it for now. I think in my list, so I hope you enjoyed. That is our very first lesson with bar charts. Take a photo, put it on your fridge, tell your grandma, and have a good day. See you at the next video.